The Helmet TX was a groundbreaking American sports prototype racing car developed in 1968 to test the viability of using gas turbine engines in sports car racing. Now this car was a collaborative effort between racing driver Ray Heppenstall, McKee Engineering and Continental Aviation and Engineering with the financial backing of Helmet Corporation. The Helmet TX was not the first attempt at using a turbine engine in racing, but it became the first and only turbine car to achieve victory in a race, earning two Sports Car Club of America or SCCA race victories and two qualifying sprint victories during its single year of competition. In other words, this is a pretty special jet engine race car. Now the development of the Helmet TX came at a time when gas turbine engines were gaining interest in the automobile industry as an alternative two piston engines. Previous attempts such as Chrysler's turbine car and the Rover BRM racing car which I made an entire video on and that car actually raced at Le Mans. So if that's something you would like to see you can go and watch it after this one. But in those cars the technology showed promise but failed to win over the public or achieve any significant racing success. The Helmet DX however did win and had some success. Now the Helmet DX was inspired by Andy Granatelli's STP Paxton turbo car for Indianapolis 500. You see, Ray Heppenstall envisioned a simplified design for a turbine-powered sports car that could be more competitive. He approached various companies, eventually securing the backing of Helmet Corporation, which provided financial support and the materials for the project. Now, with this support, the project could officially start. The chassis for the Helmet TX was designed and built by McKee Engineering. The initial chassis, known as the MK9, was adapted from an older McKee car, used in the Can-Am series. However, two brand new chassis were specifically constructed for the Hummer DX, with the second one being slightly longer to accommodate the turbine engine. The chassis featured a custom mid-engine layout, adhering to the FIA's Group 6 regulations for sports prototypes. It had a closed cockpit, with coal wing doors and utilized standard double wishbone suspension, coil springs and disc brakes. The fuel tank was positioned between the cockpit and the turbine. The turbines used in the Helmet TX were leased from Continental Aviation and Engineering. So the engine found in the car was the TS325-1 gas turbine engine. These engines were prototypes originally intended for a military helicopter contract that Continental did not pursue at the time. These turbines weighed around 170 pounds or 77 kilograms and provided 350 horsepower and 880 newton meters of torque, which is a lot of power at quite a low weight. Now these turbine engines could reach a maximum of 57,000 RPM and obviously sounded absolutely insane. <laughs> Now the Helmet TX employed a two-stage setup with an internal power turbine driving the rear wheels through reduction gearing. Due to the turbine's variable output and high torque, a standard gearbox was unnecessary, resulting in a single-speed transmission. However, the gearing ratios could quickly be adjusted in the differential, allowing for adaptability to different circuits. Now in order to prevent lag in the turbine's response, a wastegate system was incorporated to regulate the flow of hot gases. This was a really well-engineered racing machine, and soon they were ready to take the car to the track. So the Helmet TX made its racing debut at the 24 Hours of Daytona, but mechanical issues led to an early retirement. The following races at Sebring and Brands Hatch also ended prematurely due to various problems. However, the team found success in the SCCA National Championship races, with the Helmet TX earning its first victory at the Vandergraft Trophy event, followed by another win at the Marlboro 300. These victories marked the first ever wins by a turbine-powered car. The Helmet TX continued its impressive performance with a podium finish at the 6 hours of Walkins Glen, earning points towards the international championship for makes. The team then aimed to compete at the 24 hour of the Mon, but a series of mechanical failures and accidents prevented them from achieving success. After the 1968 season, Helmet discontinued the racing program due to its high costs. However, two of the TX chassis were repurposed for promotional purposes. One chassis 
the MK9A was transformed into a road legal car and used by helmet executives and VIPs for demonstration purposes. It featured headlights, taillights and other modifications to meet requirements of the Department of Transportation. In other words, it could be driven on the road. Imagine how badass you would feel driving down the road in one of these. Now the other chassis, the MK10, remained as a non-road legal race car and was occasionally used for exhibition runs and public appearances. It retained its original race spec configuration and continued to showcase the capabilities of turbine powered cars. Over time, the Helmet TX significance and impact on motorsports have been recognized. It remains the only turbine powered car to have achieved victory in a race. Its pioneering design and innovative use of gas turbine technology have made it a legend in the racing world. This project demonstrates the potential of gas turbine engines in racing, showcasing their high torque output, simplicity and adaptability. While turbine powered cars did not become mainstream in motorsports or production vehicles, their influence can still be seen in the development of hybrids and electric powertrains. And actually, Ariel, the company behind the Atom, has built a fully electric track car with a turbine powered range extender. Again, I made a video on that if you would like to see it, but it's a pretty cool car. At the end of it, the legacy of the Helmet DX continues to inspire and captivate racing enthusiasts and its historic victories will always be remembered as milestones in the evolution of automotive technology and motorsports. But let me know down below what you thought of the video and the car. I think this is a pretty cool car. Any car that's powered by a jet engine, no matter how unpractical it is, it just, it's bloody cool. Being able to say, no, I've got a, a helicopter engine in my car or I've got a jet engine in my I, I think you feel like you've got the biggest wang in the game yeah anyways let me know down below what you thought of the video if you liked it please give it a like and subscribe to the channel and if you did like it you'll most probably like most of my other stuff so go through my channel see if there's something else you like i'll check you guys in the next one cheers eh?